So, sorry, I forgot to mention again. Let's all go to our music. And let's play this first song. Ready? Go. I would recommend that you put um, the playlist on repeat, not the first song on repeat, but the whole playlist in case we go a little over. Um, so yeah, now we have all the same music at once. Great. Let's come on down to our knees. I'm gonna start by facing you, but you can face forward. We're just sitting on the heels. If this doesn't feel great for you, you can always take a block, make your feet wide and sit down on the block like so. We just wanna to start to stretch out gently the, the quads, the fronts of our thighs. Let your hands fall down on your thighs. Take a big breath in to stay. Exhale, bring your chin down to your chest. Start to breathe here, chin to chest. Slowly start to lift your head. So bring your left ear to left shoulder a little bit, just stretching out that right side of the neck, lowering down the right shoulder. Chin comes back to chest. Right ear comes over to right shoulder, lowering that left shoulder. Nice and heavy there. Again, chin to chest, left ear to left side. Right shoulder heavy. Chin to chest. Right ear, right shoulder, left shoulder heavy. Today's class is gonna be all about splits and hips. We do a lot of hip openers, open up the hamstrings, the backs of the legs. Again, chin to chest, left ear to left shoulder. Chin to chest, right ear to right shoulder. Lift the head all the way up nice and slow. Take an inhale. Exhale, let the head drop back. Slowly lift the head. And now we're just gonna make little circles with the head, chin to chest. Swing the left ear to left shoulder, head comes back around, right ear to right shoulder. Just keep going in that one direction. Just circling the head and neck. Taking your time. Then go ahead, switch sides. One more round. And come all the way up. From here, we're gonna do one of my favorite reclined supine poses called saddle pose. But today, it's since saddle pose, I'll show you what full saddle looks like, and then I'm gonna show you what we're actually gonna do, which is half saddle. Full saddle is when you open up the knees, you sit between the heels and the feet. Already, this is a very deep stretch on the front of the thighs. This might be already too much on your knees, so don't do the full one yet. And half saddle is when we're gonna kick out one foot and have the other foot tucked. So we're not gonna sit on the heel. You can do either side. Let me do the other side to start so you can see it. So I'm gonna tuck back my left leg behind me. So feet start off in front of you, seated position. Bending the left knee, grabbing the foot and swinging it back behind you. Seems easy enough, right? Maybe you start to feel a stretch on the top of the left thigh or whatever side you're doing. If this is already a deep stretch for you, you can just stay here. Maybe you lean back with both hands, get a little bit of a reclined position. Maybe you come down a little further onto your forearms. Maybe you feel you want to come all the way down onto your back. Whew. And you should definitely feel it there, unless you're very bendy, in which case you might need an even deeper pose in this, which you no, know, we're not really doing right now. So wherever you're at, just come into what feels good, feels like a nice stretch on the top of the left thigh, your right thigh. Take a few breaths to stay. Starting that ujjayi breath. Tad likes to look at me, I guess. 
Excuse me. Excuse me. Ujjayi breath is that breath that drags along the throat, drags along the back of the mouth, makes a gentle noise, kind of like the sound of the ocean, breathing in and out through the nose, maybe occasionally through the mouth as you need to exhale a lot of energy and air. Couple more breaths. Now as you come up, I want you to do this very slowly. Start by bringing the elbows down to the floor, grabbing underneath the thighs with your hands, and slowly pulling underneath the thighs and draw yourself up. My cat's playing with my ponytail now. Bring your hands behind your back, pressing into the floor, and push yourself up. Whew. Untuck that foot, switching the other side, tucking the other foot. Now, if you, do, if you did do your full straddle, for, you know, you wanted that deeper stretch the whole time, then you just stay in full straddle for both sides, obviously. So other side, again, we can either lean back if you feel that stretch already here. We can try coming down onto our forearms slowly. And if we really want to try it out, coming all the way down onto our backs. Hands can rest anywhere. Maybe you start to close the eyes. Just enjoying the sound of Ozzy. I feel like we need to check in on Ozzy. How's he doing? Take a few more breaths. And for those of you watching on YouTube when this is put online later, um, the reason I say the Ozzy comment is because there is a playlist that goes in this class. So you can check that out in the description. Take a couple more breaths to stay. So you're gonna to start to come up, elbows to the floor, grabbing underneath the thighs, bringing yourself up, hands coming underneath your back, pressing up. Now untuck the foot. Maybe you start to bend the knees, kind of bounce them up and down. So we're in our seated position. We're gonna inhale, lift the arms up, flex the toes up towards you. Exhale, forward fold, maybe grabbing the feet, the shins, anywhere on the shin or you can grab the toes, go ahead and do that. Tandasana pose. <sighs> Take a couple breaths, start by rounding the spine, chin to chest, looking down towards the belly button. Then as you inhale, doing a little cow pose, opening the chest, looking forward, drawing the shoulders down as much as you can, looking to the big toes. Release the feet or shins, start to walk the hands back up. We're gonna bend the right knee and grab the right foot with both hands. Now you don't have to press into the foot and straighten the leg totally, not necessary unless you want to. You can just press the foot into the hands with a nice bend in that knee right here. Draw the shoulders down, flex the foot, press the foot into the hands. If you do like to straighten the legs, go for it. As you do this pose, press that left heel down into the floor. Now I want you to take your left hand and grab the out right side of the right foot. Reach the right arm behind you, twist to the right. And you can really bend the knee here if you like as well, or straighten it again, either side, either way is fine. Nice, come back, look forward, bend the right knee a lot. Grab the right foot with the right hand, Half happy baby, the knee comes and opens to the right side of your body. Like a nice seated half happy baby. Just gently pulsing that knee back. Now if you wanna stay here, that's fine. If you want a deeper hipper, deeper hipper, <laughs> deeper hip opener, there we go. You can bring the sole of the right foot to that left bicep and grab the outer right shin with the left hand. And you can kind of swing the right arm around, grab the shin again, kind of holding your right shin, almost like a little baby, swinging it side to side, flexing the right toes up. Now you want to point the left toes up to the sky and then turn them to the left. So you're starting to have that inner left thigh show towards the sky. We're gonna let that right knee come down and have the top of the right foot 
place on top of the left thigh. Now it depends on how open your hips are and if you have half lotus or not, but your foot can be high up on the thigh. It can be lower, almost the knee, but don't put the foot directly on the knee. From here, you're just gonna take your right hand, just gently press on the top of the right knee. And when I say press, I mean really gently. And you can lean back with that left hand, just casually leaning, gentle press. Now you could stay here. You could take it a step further, bring the foot all the way up that left thigh and have more of a half lotus, which is a deeper hip opener here. Gently pressing down. This song reminds me that we're actually gonna do a typo class soon, so keep an eye out for that. Nice, let's switch sides, release that right foot to the floor. Switching sides, left foot, grab the foot with both hands, flex the toes up, kick the foot up into the hands. Again, bent knee or straight. Maybe start with a bend in the knee to really be able to press the foot into the hands. Flexing the right toes up towards the sky as well, pressing the right heel down into the floor as you do this. <clears throat> Draw the chest up towards the toes, shoulders lower down as much as you can. Breathe here, ujjayi breath. Bring a bend in the knee if you don't have it. Grab the outer left side of the left foot with the right hand. And we're twisting open to the left, reaching back with the left arm. Pressing that left foot into the right hand as we do this and pressing down into the right heel as we do it as well. Looking back behind us, spread those left fingertips and reach. <sighs> Maybe you start to straighten the knee if it feels okay. Not a requirement. Nice, start to bend the knee if it's not bent. Come into that half happy baby. So grab the foot with the left hand, let the knee come over to the left side and just gentle little pulses to the left. Flexing the foot. Another step further, like we did on the other side, we can flex a left foot and bring the sole of the foot to the right bicep, grabbing the outer left shin with the right hand, wrapping that left arm around, also grabbing the shin, holding a little baby, which is just your shin. Flexing the left toes, pressing the right heel down into the floor. Right toes point up and then they open to the right side so you see that inner groin area of that right thigh. We're gonna let that left foot come down to the thigh so the top of the left foot comes down to that right thigh. You can lean back with the right hand and you can gently press on that left thigh and knee gently towards the floor with the left hand. Again, you can change how difficult this is for you by bringing that left foot up even higher on the right side for more of a half lotus. Just gently pressing. <sighs> nice release. From here, we're gonna swing our feet around and behind us, come into tabletop. Now from here, we're gonna have our knees come close together. Take the right knee, cross it over the left, so it's kind of an awkward swing around. You can see me do it here. And then we're gonna take the feet and part them away from each other. So the right foot comes to the left side of the mat, left foot to the right side. We're gonna come down slowly, sit between the heels for Gomukhasana, cow face pose. We're not gonna do the full pose with the arm opener and shoulder opener. Instead, we're gonna do a fold over the stacked knees. Coming down onto your hands, leaning forward. You can round the spine here, bring the chin in close to the chest, or you can press into the floor, kind of slide the hands closer to you, draw the elbows in and look forward for more of a chest opener. In this pose, you actually do feel the stretch more in the hips. This you do, but you feel it more in the back because it looks like you're doing a deep forward fold, but in reality, most of the folding is coming from my spine. You do this, lifting the chest, opening up the heart, and then lowering the pelvis first. That's where the forward fold comes from. Nice. We're gonna press behind us, come back onto our knees, undo this and come to the other side. So the left knee crosses over the right. Feet part away from each other in opposite directions. Sit that down between the heels. Gomukhasana, cow face pose. 
We can walk the hands forward, again, opening the chest. Or if you just want to settle down, you can do that as well. Closing the eyes, take a few breaths. Maybe bring the chin to chest and just shake the head out no a couple times. Press behind you, start to come up, tabletop. Swing the feet around. And I swear this will be quick. We're just doing a few crunches. I don't like to go to yoga class without doing some kind of focused core work because it's so important to keeping your back safe and you need your back for everything you do, right? So let's do a couple crunches. Promise it won't be too crazy. We're gonna bring the hands interlaced behind the head, bend the knees up towards the sky. And all we're gonna do is kick out the legs, open up the arms, and then bend the elbows in towards the knees, bend the knees towards your chest, all right? So we're gonna inhale, extend, exhale, bend. Let's do that 15 times. Inhale, bend for one, and two. At your own pace, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, almost there, fourteen, and 15, hug the knees in. I promised you'd be quick and it is. Let's rock up to Malasana. So you can rock forward and back a few times. And when you're ready, you can either just push yourself up, which is what I'm gonna do. Malasana is a squat pose. You can come to the front of your mat. You can always take this on your block, slide it underneath and take a seat. So I'm gonna take the full pose. Start to move a little side to side, lifting one heel at a time, just getting a little deeper into this pose. Now, if you feel your heart opening enough in this pose, maybe you're down here a little and that's fine. But if you feel the chest opening, you might start to open up the arms in front of the shins and have your fingertips come down to the floor. This just encourages a little more openness in the hips. Take a few breaths wherever you are. You can still be with your hands to heart center. That's perfectly fine. If you want to bring a little more energy into this pose, you can always come into your uh, crow pose, coming to balance on the shins. All of this is optional, especially those more challenging aspects. But if you have it in you, go for it. Take one more breath where you are. And exhale. We're going to stand and forward fold. Ooh, it's an asana. Move the knees one at a time, just kind of bending into this forward fold side to side. Now with this next pose, we do need our blocks ready. So if you don't have your block near you, grab it or your book, whatever it is. And since we're gonna be working on the lower or the back of the legs, I'm gonna have you do a foot opener. Plant our fascia. We're gonna let the left heel come down to the floor, let the toes come to the top of the book or the block. And you can have the other block there if you have two as like a little support, or you can just have the hands come down towards the block you're using. If you don't have any blocks or anything with you, you can always just walk over to the wall and just bring your foot to the wall, heel on the floor. It can be just that easy too. You don't have to be too fancy. Wherever you are, we're just allowing that left calf to kind of melt open. Let the head hang down. <sighs> that song just reminded me that it's almost 420. So let me think if there's going to be a class. Today's the 16th, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Oh, yeah. Nice. So we're going to have a yoga class on Monday, 420. You're at the comfort of your own home, so feel free to partake. I'll remind Brandon that's what's going on. Go ahead, switch sides, right heel to the floor, right toes up on the block. And this may seem like a really slow way to get into, um, you know, your split practice, but I promise you it depends on, you know, of course it depends on the heat of your home, you know, do you like hot or cold in your home? 
Um, for me, it's usually a little on the colder side. So I like to take it a little slower and not jump right into those deep stretches, which can be a little more harm than good if you don't have the right prep for those deeper poses. Take two more breaths. Slowly release, blocks move to the side. Feet underneath you, inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale to forward fold. Maybe feeling a little difference in the calves. Bend the knees, sweep the arms up, but come into chair pose Ukatasana. Sitting towards the heels more than the toes. So you can definitely tell if you're leaning too forward because you feel your heels lift. You want those heels to be down, maybe even the toes to be lifted up. Now from here, I don't always like to have my big toes touching. I don't, I think it's a little uncomfortable, honestly, and I don't like that position of my feet and hips. So I always have my toes facing forward, heels and toes aligned when I'm in chair. You can always take it a little modify with a block. That way you have a little more energy going in and up through your body. Totally up to you if you wanna put a block between your thighs. Wherever you are, we're gonna take a few more pul few pulses here. Just kind of coming down and up slowly but steady in your chair pose. Really pressing into the floor as you rise. A few more pulses. Six, five, four, three, two, and press to stand, lift the arms, inhale. Exhale, hands come to heart center. Inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, forward fold. Let's take a nice slow sun A to begin. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Let's step one foot back then the other. Plank pose. Press into the hands. And when you're in plank pose, my physical therapist had helped me with this because I, <laughs> I always press down and spread the shoulder blades and make my back really rounded. But you wanna make your back, back actually flat pressing down, but not rounding the shoulder blades too much. Let's take it modified, knees come down, high to low push up. <sighs> Inhale, upward facing or cobra. Let's come through tabletop, tuck the toes, downward facing dog. Press into the hands, first downward dog possibly of the day, unless you're doing a bunch of yoga all day, every day, which I'd be very impressed. I feel like you should win an award. Maybe start to pedal out the heels. Really press into the hands. Find a little bit of stillness. Close the eyes. Sink the heels down into the floor. Really get those heels heavy here, just helping out, you know, the opening of the calves and the hamstrings. One more deep breath. Look forward, step one foot forward, then the other. Inhale halfway, exhale Tanasana. Bend the knees, sweep the arms up to rise, inhale. Exhale, hands come to heart center. Let's come into a sun salutation C, starting to move those hips a little more, inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale halfway, exhale, fold. Right foot steps back, right knee lowers down to the floor. You can untuck the toes or keep them tucked. Sweep the arms up, press the hips forward as much as they allow. If you feel a little uneasy in that back right knee, you can always tuck the toes. Go ahead and interlace the hands and just press the hands down that top left thigh. Opening the chest, maybe a small back bend. Take a breath to stay. Bring the hands down, left foot steps back for plank. High to low push up. Inhale. Exhale. From downward facing, find your stability. Inhale, reach that right leg up to the sky. Open the hip as much as you want here. Press down into both hands evenly if you can, not more into the left. 
Lift a little higher, draw the knee in towards your nose. <sighs> Inhale, lift it up. This time, see if you can lower the left elbow to the floor and keep that right hand up. Maybe move that right hand back a little bit so it's more under the shoulder. Now as I'll press into the left hand, lift up that left arm back to our regular one-legged. Now the right knee in, step the right foot forward between the hands, left knee lowers down. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Let's draw the elbows down, come into our goalpost arms, spreading the fingertips. Hands come down to line the front right foot. Let's make it a little more challenging. Tuck the back left toes, lift the left knee. And then we're gonna lift the left leg for a standing split, balancing on the right foot. Fingertips can be down to the floor. They can be on your blocks, books, whatever it is. They can start grabbing the back of the right ankle. Definitely helps get a little more air with that lifted leg. Slowly bend the left knee and close it down, left foot down to the floor. Inhale, halfway. <sighs> Exhale, forward fold. Bend the knees, slowly roll to rise for three, two, and one. Inhale, reach. Exhale, forward fold right into the other side. <sighs> Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. <sighs> left foot back, left knee down. Untuck toes if you want, sweep the arms up. Hips press forward as much as you like. Interlace the fingers the opposite way you did before. Press down to the top of the right thigh. Open the chest, maybe a little back bend here, looking up towards the sky. Bring the hands down, tuck the back left toes, lift the left knee, plank pose. High to low. Inhale, upward facing to downward. Take a breath to stay. This time the left leg sweeps up, one legged downward facing. Open the hip as much as you like. Notice any differences in this side. Lift up a little higher. As you exhale, draw the knee to nose. Inhale, lift the left leg. This time that right elbow starts to drop down. Maybe that left hand comes a little underneath that left shoulder. You can bend the elbow up or bring it down a little bit. Let's come into our regular one-legged, lifting the right elbow. Draw the knee forward, step the left foot through between the hands, right knee lowers. Untuck the toes if you like, sweep the arms up. Inhale, reach high. Exhale, bend elbows down, goal post arms. Spread the fingertips. Take a breath. Bring the hands down. Tuck the back right toes. I always, before I come into a standing um, split here, I always like to take the front toes, front foot, kind of slide it in toward me a little. Gives me a little more strength in the leg. So go ahead, slide the left foot back if you need. Tuck the back right toes, lift the right knee, standing split, lift the right leg. Fingertips down, hands to the blocks, or maybe you grab the back of that left leg with one, maybe you try both hands, a little balance here. Take a breath to stay, exhale, whew, right knee comes down, inhale halfway. Exhale, fold. Bending one knee at a time. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees, sweep the arms up. Take your time. You don't have to be fast. Exhale, hands together, heart center. Inhale, reach up. This time the left foot steps back, comes into warrior one pose. Hips are more or less facing forward. Shoulders are down and strong. Arms are strong. Plugging the shoulder blades into their sockets. Now from here, I want you to lean forward, reach the arms. Start to tuck the back left toes, lean into that right foot. Coming into warrior three. Our balance, we can reach forward, we can reach back. Ooh. 
with airplane arms, we can bring the hands to heart center, whatever you feel today. And slowly we're gonna step the left foot back for our lunge, so tucking the toes. We're in our lunge with our hands to heart center to meet. From here, I want you to do 10 little pulses. So bend the left knee down a little closer to the floor and pulse the left knee here for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, nice, four, three, two, and one. Stay on your lunge, lean forward, twist to the right. Maybe look to the right, maybe open the arms. Ooh, keep that back left leg nice and strong. <sighs> Press back into the left heel. Hands come to heart center. Slowly lower the left knee down to the floor. Untwist the arms. Hands and arms come inside of the right leg. Heel to the right foot to the top right corner. You can either stay here you can untuck the toes. You can come down onto your block with your forearms. Whew. You can lower your forearms down to the floor. You can pet your kitty. This is really your opportunity to kind of catch your breath. Get a nice deep opener here in the right hip and in front of the left thigh. And again, you can always take this opportunity to have an open chest as well. And it's nice to use both blocks here if you do. Opening the chest, looking forward. I find that doing this actually has a deeper stretch for that left front hip. So it's really about where you feel the tightest. If you feel the tightest in that right hip, maybe come down. If you feel tighter in the front left hip, maybe come up. Nice. So I'm gonna to start to come out. So from here, I wanna to start to lift the hips up. So come out of that deep lunge state. Heel to the right foot to the center of the mat. Now I had do, two different flows kind of um, set up for this, but we're actually kind of coming close to time. So I'm gonna combine the two flows. We're gonna tuck the back left toes, lift the left knee, and then lower the left heel. And we're gonna come up for warrior two. Whew. So find your stability here. Find your grounding pose, keeping the arms nice and strong. Reach the left arm back, straighten the right knee more or less. You can always have a slight bend. Pour the right arm over the right leg and lower it down. Left arm reaches up, Trikonasana, triangle pose. You can look down or up. You can use your block or grab your shin or ankle. If you do grab your shin especially, I want you to swing the, the back of the elbow kind of to the front of your mat and open up that right shoulder. So an outer rotation here. From here, I'm gonna have you lower the left hand down, bend the right knee a lot. Step that left foot a little closer by tucking the back left toes and hopping it closer for pyramid pose. You can come down to your fingertips and bend the right knee a lot or a little. You can also use your blocks here at any level. You know, classically pyramid, you might have your hands, I forget what it's called for the backwards prayer position, but you'd have this mudra. But I don't find that's really necessary if what you're trying to do is just focus on the legs. It might be pretty and it might be hard, but that's not really the goal today. So just breathe here in the back of the right leg. Taking a breath. Nice, if you have the blocks, remove them. Start to come up, bend the right knee, press up. I'm gonna have you step the left foot forward. Whew. We're coming into the other side, inhale, reach up. Exhale, right foot steps back, warrior one, switching sides. Getting stable here, pressing down, especially into that left foot and the outer part of the right foot. Getting a little bit lower here. Arms are strong, shoulders lower. Hug the belly button in, Uddiyata Bandha. 
Now we can start to lean forward, maybe bring the hands to heart center, tuck the back right toes. We're leaping forward, slow or steady, or if you're me, maybe barely leaping at all, just kind of lifting. Warrior three, Fear Bhadrasana three pose. Balancing on the left foot. Very slowly we come back for lunge, tucking the back right toes, sweeping the arms up. Take a moment here to find your stability. Start to bend the right knee till it comes down close to the floor. And we pulse for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Stay here, hands to heart center, twist the left, twisted lunge. Keep that back right leg strong. Staying here, opening the arms. Take a breath to stay. Nice and slow, we start to lower the right knee and we're preparing for our dragon pose. We bring the arms inside of the left leg. We heel to the left foot to the left corner of the mat. We settle into this hip opener. If you're like me, your left leg likes to open up or both sides really. And that's just the way my femoral head fits inside of my hip socket. It's just the shape and the depth of my hip joint. That's what causes this to happen. Could be different for you. You could be totally fine with that left knee pointing forward with no pinching of any nerve. And that's kind of usually what happens if you have what I have. Um, it's usually a feeling of numbness or tingling, which means there's an entrapped nerve, which you don't want. So you can stay up, you can stay lifted on your blocks or hands, or you can come down onto your forearms. Tad likes attention today. And we're just staying here for a few breaths. Just gently moving a little side to side. Nice and slow, let's start to come up. Pressing up. Move that left foot towards the center of the mat. Tuck the back right toes, lift the right knee, lower the right heel, and we're opening up the arms for warrior two. Open the arms, lower the shoulders. Make sure that left knee and toes are pointing forward. And your right foot can be pointing towards the right side or at 45 degree angle pointing front and to the right. We reach back with the right arm, we start to straighten the left knee. And we lower the left arm down towards the left ankle or shin or block, lifting the right arm to the sky. Trikonasana. Rolling that left shoulder down and back, opening that left side, looking up or down. <sighs> Taking a couple breaths. We start to bend the left knee. We lower the hands down on either side of that front left foot. Tuck the back right toes. And we're gonna hop it forward a little bit for our pyramid pose. So if you wanna bring your blocks into this, you can. It's always nice to have some support. And of course you don't have to bend or you don't have to straighten that left knee. You can always keep a nice bend here. Even if you have the forward fold without the bend, it's still nice to make sure you don't pull anything you don't overstretch because when you overstretch, it's kind of like going two spaces back instead of one forward. You're kind of undoing the stretch for yourself if you, you know, have an injury while you stretch. So just being gentle with your body is the general rule of thumb. Couple breaths. Nice and slow, we're gonna to start to rise, bending that left knee, step the right foot forward. Ah. So go ahead, come to standing and just kind of bend one knee at a time, see how your hamstrings feel. I'm gonna turn the music up and see if I can hear it. Oh, it's a glass of yes. All right. 
So from here, we're going to actually do the split practice, which is the whole buildup of this class. So if you do have your two blocks, this is a great time to utilize those because this can be a very deep pose for almost every person, unless you have a lot of practice in dance or yoga, or gymnastics. So let's start with that left foot. So I'm going to bring the left foot forward, bend the knee and step the right foot back, starting with a lunge. And in our lunge, we kind of just inch the toes forward and kind of inch those right toes back until you come into as deep as a lunge that feels good. So of course, it's going to feel like work but it shouldn't feel like you're about to snap in half, right? You don't want to put that much pressure on your body, especially, you know, we're already kind of spending a lot more time sitting down uh, in the house, so it might be extra tight today. Don't be surprised. You can always lower the blocks down on the lower or the lowest setting, depending on what you like. And it's really up to you to go as low uh, as feels comfortable for you. So for me, I like to point the left toes up and kind of just shimmy my left heel closer to the front, like so. And that's kind of how I practice my splits. Just inching the heel and the knee away from each other in opposite directions. Maybe if you feel like, oh, I've been here for a few breaths and it feels okay, maybe bringing the knee further back and the left heel closer to the front, etc. Take four more breaths where you are. This is actually great too. I'm just kind of lifting the left toes up, flexing the toes and then pointing my left toes. It's getting a nice opening in the front of that right hip. It's pretty deep, so I'm not gonna hold it for too long. That's a nice little pulse you can do if it feels okay. Nice, we're gonna come out the same way we came in. So we're gonna kind of squeegee that left heel closer and slowly draw it in. Whew. Let's bring the left knee down and kind of sit on the heels for a breath. <sighs> Until we feel ready to come back. Other side. Starting with our lunge. So my right foot's forward, left knee's back, left toes back. And then again, I kind of just inch the right toes close to the front, kind of squish those left toes further back and come into that deep lunge as deep as feels good for you. Maybe untuck the toes if it feels okay. And if you feel good, you can even move that right heel even closer to the front and just see where you go here. This isn't the time to criticize yourself, like, oh my God, I'm not even close. Nobody asks you to do a split. You know, no one needs you to do a split to survive. This is just purely for the sake of stretching our bodies and seeing, you know, what we can do with our bodies when we do a lot of practice, you know, a lot of stretching. You know, these are not requirements to live. So just keep that in mind if you feel down about how stretchy you are. Take a couple more breaths where you are. And slowly come out. Whew. Go ahead, we're gonna do the same thing we did before. Bend the right knee, bring the knee down, sit on the heels. Move the hips a little side to side. It's about time to close up. So, Something you can do, and I'll give this as a, like an extra pose you can do after you finish Shavasana, shavasana um, because that's why we did a little bit of hips. The goal today was to just practice a little bit of splits and see how far we could go with some stretching. But another thing you can do to add on to this class right after we finish is doing a straddle split, which is just your heels out, legs open in that kind of split. And you can just forward fold your body over and see how that goes. So check it out, see if that feels good for you. But we're actually gonna come down onto our backs. <sighs> Coming all the way down, hugging the knees into our chest. Extend the left leg down. I love this side twist recently. Hug the right knee into the chest, 
and let the knee fall over to the left side, opening the right arm to right side. Just having a nice twist in the spine. Other side, knees into chest. Right leg extends out and down. Knee to the right side. Open the left arm to left side. Lying twist, take a few breaths. Nice job, undo the twist, knees to chest. Hug them in, move a little side to side. Roll right on the sacrum, should feel nice. And to do that, you might not hug the knees all the way in, you might bring them a little further away from you and then rock, rock a little side to side. Bring the feet down to the floor. Let's end with a nice bridge, just to bring a little more strength into the legs instead of just those stretches. So press down to the feet, knees to the sky, lift the hips, press the arms down, bridge pose. Press into the heels especially, maybe even lift up the toes. Squeeze the glutes. For five, press. Four, lift for three, two, and one. Now it's time to come into Shavasana. If you wanna come into another hip opener, from here you can bring the soles of the feet together and let the knees fall open for Supta Baddha Konasana. Supine bound angle pose. You can also place blocks underneath your knees. You can totally just bring your feet out and lay flat. Find your Shavasana. I'm gonna turn my music down just in case you can hear it. I try to close the eyes, take a deep breath in, fill the lungs, hold the breath in. Exhale, release. As you're listening to your music, and if you're listening to my playlist, you're listening to Changes by um, Black Sabbath, which is actually a cover. Don't take the lyrics too seriously. I know they can sound dark sometimes. That's just kind of metal music in general. Just take the sentiment of the song of how things can change you, but put a positive spin on it this time. We all go through changes. You don't even have to think about it in a metaphorical sense. Our bodies are constantly changing, whether it's from age, just simply time, or from our bodies reacting to our daily tasks, like what we do for a job. Our bodies change from our environment. Our minds change from our experience. Change is a natural part of the human experience of living a full life. And as scary as change can be, it allows that entry for growth. It clears up space for that expansion. With change, we become all the wiser. And sometimes it's nice to just embrace what's changing and allow it to happen instead of resisting it. Your breath can be natural. Take a deep inhale into hold in the chest. 
Unhinge the jaw, big exhale, sigh of relief. <sighs> and roll to one side slowly. And slowly start to come up to an easy C on your knees, on your bum, whatever feels good. Let your hands rest down on your thighs. For a moment, we just meditate on the idea of feeling a little more comfortable and at peace with the changes that we feel. Maybe we think of one thing that we did today or yesterday that made even a little bit of joy occur in our life. Could be watching a show you like, eating something, eating your favorite food or something sweet. Sharing laughter with a loved one. Enjoying some sunlight. And with that, inhale with the arms. <clears throat> Exhale, bring the hands to heart center. Just channeling that idea of fierce acceptance and creativity. The light and dark in me loves and honors the light and dark in you. And together we say, namaste. Thank you for coming today. I hope I timed that well with the song. Ooh.